we're going to look into mathematical insights into correlation and portfolio risk and volatility. Positions with a large positive correlation have similar directional tendencies and tend to be more volatile than uncorrelated positions. This is actually an extension, Gad, of what I just talked about with Chris Vecchio. Okay. I was talking about last week and, and how bonds and stocks are, are inversely correlated right yeah. now. But my argument is that the only way to protect yourself against a volatility explosion like last week was to have small positions and to be essentially as uncorrelated as possible. Exactly. What exactly is the mathematical relationship between correlation and portfolio volatility? For $1,000, Tony Batista, if you can that answer. Uh, no, but I know I can see the next slide. You can see the <laughs> This is one of those situations where I will give you the next slide. I'll give you the next slide. Sometimes when I say, if they have the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like getting the... the yeah. Bond. So, covariance. Covariance is a measure of the relative variability between two random variables. Seems redundant, but yes. Calculated using the expected value of the product of the deviations from the expected values of each variable. This is this is the complicated part where I need you. For <laughs> yeah, yeah. It mm. is equivalently normalized correlation and a measure of a linear dependence for two variables. Can you can you say that in like really Rwandan simple? simple. <laughs> so we can understand. I, yeah. One of the things we do at Tasty is because we try to make very complex topics simple. Yeah. So what are you trying to? What does this mean exactly? Okay. Let's try to simplify this. Let's use these mathematical equations below. So we have two different variables, x and y, random variables. And then if you look, let's split this formula into three different type or different parts. First, you're gonna see e, e x, e y, expect a value of x. Remember, x is random variables. So ex and ey, it means expect mean values of random variable x. And the ey would be means e expected mean value of random variable y. As you said, let's take an example as a trader. SPY and TLT, bonds, they're negatively correlated. If you want to build a, a certain portfolio, you're going to consider negative correlated stocks. So let's take SPY is X and TLT is Y. Okay. To find its covariance, first, you're going to say, what's the expected mean variable of SPY? Right. In SPY. And because SPY is NTF, contain many kind of stocks. And what's the mean, expected value mean of TLT, which is Y? And then if you go to uh, another side, you will see two parentheses, E negative EY and the X minus, minus EX, which means this is the deviation of variable Y from its mean and the deviation of variable Y from its mean. We have two, two random variables, X and Y. Yep. So X minus EX, it's the deviation of variable X from its mean and like deviation of variable y from its mean. And then we combine those, we calculate the mean. Those mean, it's the mean of their deviation from their means. Do you understand? I, I do understand. Yeah. That's the definition. That's the covariation. Yeah, that's covariance. Mm -hmm. Am I the only one that realized that there's six more slides like this? I actually understood that after you explained it. So variance, the additive property of variance states that the total variance when adding two random variables is the sum of the individual variances plus a term dependent on the covariance between the two. Therefore, the stronger the covariance correlation between these variables, the more cumulative variance volatility there will be. Now you see why I brought in GAT. This is simple. So this is one of the fundamental concept of probability and statistics, which is that like total variance when you are adding two random variables is not the sum of individual variance but it's the sum of individual variance plus a term of covariance. Covariance means the correlation, in simple words. Can be negative, can be positive, can be zero. So that means the total variance when you're adding two random variables is the sum of those two individual variance plus their correlation. Their correlation can be negative, can be positive, can be zero. And ideally you want? So ideally, when you want to calculate the variance, there's two types of variance. There's a sum of variance and there's a difference of variance. 
this, the only difference is the negative. You add negative to... So you want closest to zero? So we want to see if the variance, will be, if the variance is high, the cumulative variance is high, what's the cause? Because the variance will be the one which will identify the volatility. So the variance will indicate the volatility into our portfolios. If the variance is high, that means the correlation is highly, those uh, two uh, variables are highly correlated. If the variance is small or zero, that means those two variables are not highly correlated. Right. So that's what you're hoping for, closer to zero. Yep. So when examining sector ETFs and comparing combined portfolios, we discovered that portfolios containing highly correlated pairs had a 60 to 90% greater variance compared to the sum of the variances mm -hmm. of the individual portfolios. Yes. So when I look at this, I mean, ideally, we're looking for the returns correlation to be as low as possible, right? So these... This table demonstrates different kind of ETFs, different sector in ETF. So we're looking to a correlation, of course, as you said, individual variance and also combined variance. The individual variance sum is when you take one uh, like SPI variance and XLK violence. Yeah. And then you, you make the average as the sum. And the combined variance is when you make into the portfolio and then you make the combined variance. So here... As this uh, text described, we, we saw like where we have highly correlated. Their combined portfolio shift from individual variance from 60 to 90, from 60 to 90 percent. They shift from individual variance to a combined variance when it's highly correlated. That means its volatility increase yeah. from 60 to 90 when it's highly correlated. Yeah, got it. So I, I'm looking at the, I got it. I see the percent increases. Yep. So for the pair with virtually no correlation, like SPY and gold, the sum of the individual portfolio variances was roughly equal to the combined portfolio variance as the equation estimates. Right. So in this case, you have the least amount of volatility increase. Mm -hmm. Because there is no correlation. Similarly, there is no correlation. So that means the covariance, individual uh, variance, and combined variance will be similarly the same. And the increase in portfolio in terms of risk or volatility will be small, very small. Yeah, that makes total sense. Whereas SPY and IWM or SPY and FXI or you know, yes. And then they have the inverse relationship in SPY and TLT, but yeah. Mm -hmm. SPY and Q is 91%, SPY and gold 4%. That I think everybody understands. Mm -hmm. The combined portfolio with an inversely correlated pair like SPY and TLT had 40% less portfolio variance than the sum of the individual variances due to the negative correlation between the assets. Yeah, and, and that was one of the first things I noticed on that mm -hmm. previous slide, because those two are inversely correlated. They're the only two things up here that are technically inversely correlated. Which means also their risk or the volatility in the portfolio will be less or will be negative. There will be no risk in the portfolio. Right, because there's no risk stocks for response. Got it. So some of the takeaways, according to the additive property of variance, the variance of a sum of random variables equals the sum of the individual variable variances plus two times the covariance between them. It's tough. Therefore, positively correlated elements to a portfolio contribute more risk than the individual risk of the assets combined. And this additional risk contribution can be minimized by reducing the mutual correlations between positions to zero or eliminated with the addition of inversely correlated positions. I'm sorry, like TLT. SPY and TLT, mm -hmm. or zero like SPY and GLD. Exactly. Uh, which is also, all of this follows up on the conversation I just had with Vecchio, you know, about non-correlation being the one way to protect yourself, or one of the ways to protect yourself against stuff like what happened last week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, also, in the research team, we received many emails asking how you can quantify the risk in the portfolio. There you go. So this is the simple formula you can use, and you quantify your risk in the portfolio, and you manage your risk, of course. Yeah, thank you so much. Correlation kills is really what you're coming out here, but yeah. it's very hard to be have uncorrelated positions unless you're going to use yeah. some sort of option strategy that can yeah. get a correlated product and you play it to the other direction. 